Hey guys, Wednesday and we're back again for the next two chapters of Wonder. Now, when we left off yesterday, we saw that um, Augie had had a bad first day of school, but V had also had a bad first day and mom chose to help Augie instead and V really needed to talk to mom, but mom didn't know that. Sometimes we don't say things, we just expect people to know things. And, and Via did make her promise to come back and mom promised to come back to the room, but she didn't. And now Via's upset over that. Now, let's look at the next part. An apparition at the door, page 99. Once I got up in the middle of the night because I was thirsty and I saw mom standing outside Augie's room. Her hand was on the doorknob, her forehead leaning on the door, which was ajar. She wasn't going in his room or stepping out, just standing right outside the door, as if she was listening to the sound of, her, of his breathing as he slept. The hallway lights were out, and the only thing illuminating her, her was the blue nightlight in August's bedroom. She looked like a ghost standing there, or maybe I should say angelic. I tried to walk back into my room without disturbing her, but she heard me and she walked over to me. Is Augie okay, I asked. I knew that sometimes he would wake up choking on his own saliva if he accidentally turned over on his back. Oh, he's fine, she said, wrapping her arms around me. She walked me back into my room, pulled the covers over me and kissed me goodnight. She never explained what she was doing outside of his door and I never asked. I wonder how many nights she'd stood outside his door. More importantly, I wonder if she's ever stood outside my door like that. Oh, she's comparing herself to Augie and that's not good. We can't compare ourselves to others. We're our own people and parents don't love one more than the other. Just sometimes the other needs more help in this situation. Page 100, breakfast. My favorite time of the day. Can you pick me up from school today? I said the next morning, smearing some cream cheese on my bagel. Ugh, I don't like that kind of breakfast. Mom was making August lunch, American cheese on whole wheat bread soft enough for Augie to eat. While August was sat eating oatmeal at the table, Dad was eating or getting ready to go to work. Now that I was in high school, the new school routine was going to be that Dad and I would take the subway together in the morning, which meant his having to leave 15 minutes earlier than usual. Then I'd get off at my stop, and he'd keep going. And Mom was going to pick me up after school in the car. Well, I was going to call Miranda's mother to see if she could drive you home again, Mom answered. No, Mom, I said quickly. You pick me up, or I'll just take the subway. You know I don't want you to take the subway by yourself, she answered. Mom, I'm 15. Everybody my age takes the subway by themselves. She can take the subway home, said Dad from the other room, adjusting his tie as he stepped into the kitchen. Why can't Miranda's mother just pick her up again, Mom argued with him. She's old enough to take the subway by herself, Dad insisted. Oh, when mom and dads are not on the same page, it's not good because somebody's got to be the winner and the loser, the good guy and the bad guy. Mom looked at both of us. Is something going on? She didn't address her question to either one of us in particular. You would know if you'd come back to check on me last night, I said spitefully, like you said you would. <sighs> oh, V has let it out now. Oh, God, Via, said Mom, remembering now how she had completely ditched me last night. She put down the knife she was using to cut Augie's grapes in half because they were still a choking hazard for him because of the size of his palate. I'm so sorry. I fell asleep in Augie's room, and by the time I woke up, I know, I know, I nodded indifferently. Mom came over and put her hands on my cheeks and lifted my face to look at her. I'm really, really sorry, she whispered. I could tell she was. It's okay, I said. Via? Mom, it's fine. And this time I meant it. 
She looked so genuinely sorry, I just wanted to let her off the hook. She kissed and hugged me and then returned to the grapes. So is something going on with Miranda, she asked. Just that she's acting like a complete jerk, I said. Miranda's not a jerk, Augie quickly chimed in. Well, she can be, I yelled. Believe me. Okay, then. I'll pick you up, no problem, Mom said decisively, sweeping the half grapes into a snack bag with the side of her knife. That was the plan all along anyway. I'll pick Augie up from school in the car, and then we'll pick you up. We'll probably get there about a quarter to four. No, I said firmly before she'd even finished. Isabel, she can take the subway. She's reading War and Peace for crying out loud. What does War and Peace have anything to do with this? Answered Mom, clearly annoyed. It means you don't have to pick her up in the car like she's a little girl, he said sternly. Via, are you ready? Get your bag and let's go. I'm ready, I said, pulling on my backpack. Bye, Mom. Bye, Augie. I kissed them both quickly and headed toward the door. Do you even have a Metro card? Mom said after me. Of course she has a Metro card, answered Dad, fully exasperated. Yeesh, Mama. Stop worrying so much. Bye, he said, kissing her on the cheek. Bye, big boy, he said to August, kissing him on the top of his head. I'm proud of you. Have a good day. Bye, Daddy. You too. Now, Dad and I jogged down the stoop stairs and headed down the block. Call me after school before you get on the subway, Mom yelled at me from the window. I didn't even turn around but waved my hand at her so she'd know I heard her. Now, Dad did turn around, walked backward for a few steps. War and peace, Isabel, he called out, smiling as he pointed at me. War and peace. Now, if you don't know, War and Peace is a really thick novel book. And most people her age do not want to read those books. Most people my age do not want to read that book. So it's a big deal that she's having to read such a thick book and that she understands it. So dad's saying she's old enough that she can do this on her own. And mom doesn't have to worry. She understands she's she's getting older. She can do this by herself. And dad's just trying to make Via feel like her own person, like she can do things on her own too, which is kind of what she needs right now. Now, we'll pick back up tomorrow with the next chapter. And guys, don't forget to be checking your Facebook, your dojo, your live grades, and enjoy your spring break. See you tomorrow.